Hi, welcome to Pyography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this episode, I am going to talk about the last thing we do with our artwork, hanging it on the wall. I will discuss the different types of hangers that can be used and when and why I might use a particular hanger. Well, let's get started. Sawtooth. This first sawtooth hanger has pronged legs. Before using this type of hanger, make sure that the prongs will not go all the way through the board. If all is good, then mark the center of the board. This particular hanger has a bump that is aligned with the center of the board. Once the hanger is properly positioned, then use a hammer to tap it securely into the board surface. This type of hanger sits above the board so that nail heads will fit between the hanger and the board. If needed, you can remove the hanger, but that will leave two holes in the back of the board. There are also prongless sawtooth hangers. These come in a variety of sizes and seldom have a center bump. Like the pronged variety, they do have an odd number of teeth. Align the center tooth of these hangers with the marked center line on the board. I find it very helpful to use small pliers to hold the tiny nail in place. I tap the nail in just enough to hold it. Then I add the second nail. Afterwards, I hammer them into the board to secure the hanger. There is a gap between the hanger and the board. This hanger can be removed with a flat head screwdriver, just like the previous one. I use sawtooth hangers on smaller artwork. I consider smaller artwork to be 10 inches or less in width. On this really small and thin artwork, I used a hot glue gun to secure a prongless sawtooth hanger to the back of the artwork. The pros. Only one hanger is needed. They are quick and easy to use. The cons. If installed too far off center, the artwork won't hang right. Artwork doesn't hang flush on the wall. Some art contests won't accept artwork that uses sawtooth hangers. I wouldn't trust them on large or heavy artwork. Eye hooks. Eye hooks are metal circles with a threaded leg that comes to a point. When installing, I first create a pilot hole with a nail. This guides the eye hook into the wood, and it makes it much easier to get the eye hook started. To secure, simply turn the eye hook until the threaded leg is completely embedded in the wood. I have found that pliers are very helpful to turn the hook. As you can see, the eye hook sticks up considerably from the wood surface. For actual artwork, two eye hooks are needed. For this demonstration, I'm just going to do one. To make the eye hook functional, braided picture hanging wire is needed. Securing the wire to the hook is done by inserting the wire into the eye. Then fold over about one inch of the wire and begin wrapping it around the rest of the wire. Near the end of the video is a chapter covering braided picture hanging wire. I like to use eye hooks to hang artwork created on cradled boards. The reason is that it allows the artwork to hang flush on the wall. Another reason I like them is that the eye hooks will fit on narrow cradled boards. The pros. They allow cradled boards to hang flush on the wall. They can fit on narrow boards. The cons. You need two hooks and wire to use. They stick up considerably from the board surface. They have limited applications. Triangle. Triangle hangers are exactly what they sound like. A triangular piece of metal with a sleeve for attaching on one side. They are attached with screws. Always check and make sure that the wood is thicker than the screw because you don't want the sharp points sticking through. Pilot holes make it easier to insert the screw into the board. I'm going to use the holes created from the prongless sawtooth hanger. It is a simple process of using a screwdriver to secure the hanger to the board. Two hangers are needed for the artwork, but for this demonstration I'm going to use one. 
This hanger has a much smaller profile than the eye hooks. After the hanger is secured to the board, then braided picture wire hanger is attached to the triangle metal. This is the same process that we did with the eye hooks. Thread 1 to 2 inches of wire through the triangle, then fold the wire end over. Afterwards, wrap the wire end tightly around the main wire. If needed, use pliers to secure the loose ends. I use triangle hangers on larger artwork, which I consider to be anything over 10 inches wide. The wire makes it super easy to hang the artwork on the wall. They can be used on cradled boards. I have also used a hot glue gun to attach a triangle hanger on the back of a project created on lightweight, thin wood. The pros. It can be used on most artwork. Of the three I demoed, this is the most secure method. It doesn't stick out very far from the board's surface. I would trust this hanger for large and or heavy artwork. Cons. Two hangers are needed plus wire. The artwork does not hang flush on the wall. Hanger shopping. All of the different hangers can be found in craft stores, home improvement stores like Lowell's and Home Depot, numerous online vendors, including Amazon. There are kits that are available. These kits are great because they contain everything you need. They have enough variety to cover a wide range of weights. Some of them will go up to 50 or even 75 pounds. Generally, you can get a pack of 100 hangers for around 8 US dollars. I will put a link to the products in the video description below. Braided wire. Braided wire is nothing more than numerous strands of thin wire braided together for added strength. Braided wire can be found on Amazon, craft stores, numerous online places, and even home improvement stores like Home Depot. Make sure to buy wire that can handle the weight of your artwork. For me, 30 pound wire has been more than sufficient for my art projects. Well, that is it for this video. I hope you found the information helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon.